Praise the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Great morning, everybody. And gracious morning in Jesus' name. You seem to be coming alive and getting awake. When you were clapping, I was hearing, I thought, you know, some were sleeping, some were dozing, some were awake. Praise the Lord again. Father, we thank you this hour. We bless your name because you're still the same, forever the same. We're asking, O oh Lord, that today you impart the knowledge of the word to everyone in abundance in Jesus' name. Amen. Open our hearts, open our understanding, bring us out of the past and lead us, propel us into the future. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. When we come to a conference like this, we need to open our hearts so that what we hear, if it's different from what we knew before, you not throw it away and say, that's new. I never knew that before. I never saw that before. You know, if Enoch had had the same knowledge as all the other people in the land, no way he would have made the rapture. The rapture was not for him. The rapture was not for the people of that generation. It was a future thing that the Lord has reserved for the church, the militant church, the triumphant church, the sanctified holy church. And yet, before that time, of the promised rapture, that man walked with God like no other man had walked with God and God took him. If God did that for him at that time, now this is the dispensation of the church. What can we have today? What can we receive today? Much more than what you have known. I told you I was going to be dealing with the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, the Acts of God, the Acts of Christ, the Acts of the Holy Spirit. We dealt with A, and that A is authority of the Word for life and ministry. That's where we start. We hear the Word of salvation, the Word of grace, the word of his power, the word of righteousness, and then we come in. Into that word, we repent, we turn around, we confess our sins, we promise we're not going to go back to those sins anymore. We were saved, and the Spirit of God bore witness with our heart that we are now children of God. And from that time, we begin to take the milk of the world, the water of the world, the food of the world, the meat of the world, the honey in the world, the light of the world, shining in a way across a pathway. And then we begin to realize that the world is fire. That the word is hammer, that the word is a sword, and that the word will satisfy every need of our lives. Then I dealt with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and we dealt with the confirmation of the Spirit. Confirmation of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit in ministry. Now, when you are born again, the Spirit bears witness with your heart. You are a child of God. Then it leads you to understand you have not got it all. 
salvation is not all there is still another step and if you have been led and guided and taught by the holy spirit it will lead you to that experience of sanctification i'm not sure anybody preached that to enoch i'm not sure somebody came to enoch and said follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall save the lord in his work with the lord he knew that he didn't have to join a denomination called deeper life because that church deeper life was not there at the time of enoch and yet without my interaction with him I didn't even know him. I wasn't here then. He got the message from God himself. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall save the Lord. And that man yielding to the Spirit of God was sanctified, made holy and purified and a word with God in that knowledge. And then God took him then after you are sanctified the spirit of god still continues to lead you and he says you have not got it all he shall receive power after that the holy ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and in judea and in samaria to the uttermost part of the earth now i made a statement during that message of the Holy Spirit. When I commented on Acts 10, 38, I said, as I read the word, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. And then I said, I asked you, how many Holy Ghosts do we have? And we responded, one. Jesus Christ at the Holy Ghost. And I said the same Holy Ghost in Christ. Think about that. That same Holy Ghost he has given to us today. No different, not lower, not degraded. The same Holy Ghost. And you might think in your heart, hmm, I read somewhere in John, and it says God gave him the spirit without measure and then you go back to what you always knew that we cannot have the same holy ghost as christ why not jesus himself said he that believeth on me the works i do he shall do if you have a high capacity generator and it's able to service the whole field if you change and you have a much lower capacity generator it will not be able to service the whole field for you to be able to service the whole field you need the same capacity and that's why jesus said he that believeth on me, the works I do, he will do. Why? Because I go to the Father. And then he said, greater works than these shall ye do. Because I go to the Father. Now, greater works. How can you do greater works with less power? He is Christ. The Father gave him the Spirit without measure. And then he gives you a lower, lower measure. He adds 100%. You have 2%. How can you do the same work and greater works? Actually, when you come to the Acts of the Apostles, you'll find out that those apostles, they believed. Not even that the Holy Ghost of them, they knew that Christ was in them. Go through your New Testament, you'll find in Christ, in Christ, and Christ in you, 
the hope of glory. And so you have the fullness of Christ in you. And then Jesus said, He that serves me, the Father will love him and honor him. And I and my Father will come into him and abide in him. Now, you have the Father, you have the Son, you have the Holy Spirit, and you are thinking, I cannot have the same Holy Spirit as Christ had. Why not? When Christ was on earth, the people that were healed, many of them, they brought them out from every city and every village that they might touch him. And as many as touched him were made whole, they were healed, everyone. <clears throat> they were healed, everyone. But look at Peter. They didn't even have to touch Peter. And as Peter was walking on the street, and a shadow of Peter came on them, not touching them, they not touching him. And it says, they were healed Everyone, I dare tell you, he had the Holy Ghost. The same Holy Ghost that Christ said, And if you seek, you'll find. If you knock, the door will be open to you. Ask, it shall be given unto you. Amen? Yeah. What I'm telling you is, I know you already have some knowledge. You already have some understanding. But when we come to the Word of God, and we come to study. You say, Lord, show me what I never saw. Teach me what I never knew. And the Lord will take you from where you are. He'll take you higher. Take you up in Jesus' name. Amen. I want ministers, amen. amen. You know, the ministry is... Um, it's a tough ministry, a tough occupation. Many things happen here and there. Thank God for the testimony of that uh, young minister that said in the minister's conference after the prayer that he was relieved from depression. And I pray, you know, somebody can be depressed, the challenge here, pressure there, Opposition there, difficulty there, challenges there. And a man said, a little thing will shake him, jolt him. Sometimes he'll even cry. Depression. Thank God for deliverance from depression. Yeah. But you know, we ministers, we don't only face the challenge of depression, we face the challenge of deception. People coming and telling us things, showing us things that is just deception. And they make us run the fool's errand. They have deceived us and we didn't know. The Holy Ghost will take care of that. It's the one that will make you to understand what they tell you, everything they tell you. Somebody is there, somebody is there, somebody is there. It's not all true. Deception. The Lord deliver us in Jesus. Sometimes there is distraction. Distraction. You're plowing and you're going the straight way. And then something comes to bring distraction in your life. It's not only depression. Depression is there. Deception is there. Distraction is there. And the Lord will keep us standing and keep us focused so that that diversion will not destroy your ministry in Jesus' name. Uh, you know, we were even told that there's something called dementia. That means, you know, as people get older, they forget what they ought to remember. They remember what they ought to forget. They go back to the baby stage of life again. And we ministers, it is as we come like this, and the Lord ministers to us, Yes, depression gone. Dementia also taken away from your life in Jesus' name. And then there is disease, old age disease. This one is beating at you. That one is beating at you. But 
just like when you were younger. As you are getting older now, the stripes of Jesus will heal you completely in Jesus' name. Disease gone. I said disease gone. Uh, you know, the burden we have in ministry sometimes is the dead that comes upon us. We want to build this and build this. We borrow money from the bank and borrow money from members and borrow money from everywhere. And the dead now weighs you down. I pray all the provisions you need for life. All the provisions you need for family. All the provision you need for the ministry. The Lord supply in Jesus' name. Sometimes it's not just depression. It's defilement. Defilement. The pastor, the preacher, the professional, the director, the manager has too much privacy. To himself. He counsels, he listens to some people, he gets intimate, he gets near the woman, and if it's a woman, gets near the man. And in these days of WhatsApp and telephone and social media and Zoom, you can even see the people you are talking to. And sometimes defilement comes. Not only depression, there's depression, yes. Then there's defilement. You know, uh, depression that somebody breaks down, crying, uh, when there's a little wind, a little problem. It, it can still reserve, it can still have a salvation and still have his holy life, only that his mind is weak. But he can still go to heaven if he dies. But defilement, that's a more serious problem. That if defilement comes in your life, in the life of any minister, if you die in that condition, that's dangerous. That's damnation. That's eternal suffering. You know, for other people, not just depression, domination. You know, everybody wants to control the man up there, the woman up there, so that... He cannot say what we don't approve. And they're domineering. They have such a bully figure that, you know, the pastor, if he yields to that, you know, the pastor fears uh, depression. I don't want to be depressed. Don't you fear domination? That another person will take over your life, dominate you, and... Not allow you to say what you ought to say. Domination. And when we come, as we come like this, we want to overcome in every area and live a life, a life of power, a life of authority. And when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, that's what it takes care of. It clears everything out of your life. I missed an amen there. You know, Sometimes in life, you have the vision, you have the strategy, you have the goal, you have the peak, you have where you want to get to, but you are deficient. Everything you ought to have, you're deficient in your health, you're deficient in your blood, you don't have the full blood running in your veins deficiency and when you come to the lord i'm telling you all this so that you know when we pray you're not just praying for the same old request you have always had understand the challenge that comes before a minister and then you come to the lord and you say lord i want to go higher i want to rise higher i want to soar higher they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagle. You will walk, you will not faint. You will run and you will not be tired. The Lord confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. A. Authority acts. C. Confirmation. T. Transformation and it's the transformation that comes through the name of Jesus. This morning, 
transformation through the name of Jesus for ministry. The name of Jesus in ministry. The name of Jesus that helps us to minister like our Messiah, our Master ministered. The Lord will give it to you. If you are not satisfied with where you have been, if you are not saying, I just came, I've read the book of Acts through and through many times, if you are not like that, you will say, Lord, show me, reveal to me, I want you to know, you will know. You will have. And you will perform. Am I talking to somebody there today? The Lord turn around your life, your ministry, and everything the Lord wants you to do. The Lord confirm in your life in Jesus' name. Now, the transformation through the name of Jesus for ministry. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 10. Acts, chapter 4, we're looking at verse 10. Be it known unto you, or unto you all, and to all the people of Israel. Ah, of course, talking here, this is Peter. Transformation are taking place. That's the man that was fearful. That's the man that denied Christ just about 50 days earlier. But now, transformation had come from powerlessness to power. From uh, weakness unto strength. And from being ashamed unto being very vocal and very deliberate in what he said. Be it known unto you all. That unto all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, uh -uh, Peter, that's direct. You couldn't say that before, but Christ, by his resurrection and the Holy Ghost, had turned this lie around, and he could tell them, Now you crucified him. Whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you hold. Then in verse 11, it tells us, This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the hedge of the corner. Then in verse 12, it now tells us, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven, the name, the name, the name, that name held a conspicuous place in the Acts of the Apostles. It says there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. In the name of Jesus and that name will work wonders in our lives in Jesus name the three points we're looking at today number one treasure in the name of Jesus for all men number two triumph for the name of Jesus while ministering number three transformation through the name of of Jesus by ministers. Let's come to number one. Number one, treasure in the name of Jesus for all men. Three things. Number one, salvation for all sinners. Number two, healing for all sick of all sicknesses. Number three, deliverance from evil spirit. All in the name of the name of Jesus. Let's look at number one. Number one, it tells us in Acts chapter 2, verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name, on the name, on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Look at chapter 4 again, verse 12. It says in verse 12, neither 
Is there salvation in any other? For there is none other name under heaven, in any country, in any continent, in any religion. There's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And then in Romans chapter 10, we're reading from verse 13. It says, For whosoever, whosoever here or there, whosoever in our country and in every other country, whosoever in our tribe and any other tribe, whosoever in our denomination and in all the other denominations, for whosoever shall come upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. As we direct people to look up to Christ, not to us, as we direct our hearers to look up to Christ, not to our church, our denomination, as we tell others and we tell them salvation, free salvation, full salvation, transforming salvation is salvation that converts the soul and changes the life as we direct them for that salvation we point them to Christ. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Look at number two here. This is healing for all sickness. And it's in the name. In the name. Look at Acts chapter 3 verse 6. This man was born lame, paralyzed. And now at the age of 40 years. And looking at him... He's been there all the time. Can I remind you? 40 years of age already. And this is Jerusalem. The man had been there when Christ was on earth in Israel, in Jerusalem. And Jesus had been to that temple. And Jesus had prophesied from that temple. But the man remained paralyzed what if somebody had said if christ had walked this way before and christ had seen the man before and the man was not healed there's no connection between him and christ maybe it's his destiny maybe it's his fate maybe that's what god wants for him peter did not think so peter just knew that the Holy Ghost has now come. And it makes the name of Jesus bright, beautiful, and powerful. And so Peter said, silver and gold have I none. Think about that. Silver and gold have I none. You know, one of the senior, senior ministers in a particular church so many years ago he said you know we cannot talk like peter anymore and say silver and gold have i none look at the temple overlaid with gold look at the instrument overlaid of silver and look at how rich the church is today we can no more say silver and gold have I none? And the person he was talking to said, True, my Lord. Neither can we say in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. In the pursuit of silver and gold, in the pursuit of material wealth, the church has abandoned their faith in the name of Jesus. That name of Jesus only comes now at the end of their prayer, powerless prayer. That name of Jesus only comes now in a few of their hymns that moves nobody. But now, here, when the name of Jesus, mighty and powerful, fresh in the hearts of the people, Peter said, silver and gold are I none, but such as I have. Such as I have, you will have. Amen. You know, if there's no missionary committee supporting you, 
if there is no financial person aiding you and if there is no big man big power with long leg long hands great contact supporting you if you have the name of jesus you will go farther than the people that have silver and gold you'll go farther than the people that have the support of those missionary committees they're good but if that's all we have we don't have anything it says silver and gold are I on you know there are people in their churches they depend so much on people carrying bags and pussies around and they never never want to offend those people if i say something that my financier does not agree with then i'm done i'm gone if i say something that that rich man and business tycoon if i say something he does not agree with then i am finished true true you are finished you're finished because that's what you believe and it's so to you according to your faith but i say if there is no silver, if there is no gold, and I have the name of Jesus, nothing can finish me. Yeah. And if you have that name, the name above every name, the name that brings salvation, the name that brings healing, healing to everyone, and the name that brings deliverance, if you have that name, whatever else you don't have, you will succeed. I heard of somebody, a preacher. He was preaching and he was carried away by the Spirit of God and by the Word of God. And he said, This, this, this. And then he branched off and he said, Anyone there that does not have this holiness of heart, holiness of life, you're just sitting there. If you die, you perish. He was so bold. And then, after the service of that day, somebody came to him in the church and said, What happened this morning, Pastor? How did you talk like that? If you continue talking like that, look at me. I will leave this church. And I can tell you other people, so and so, so and so, so and so, they will leave. And then that minister during the week, for a whole week, a time enough to think about it. And he came back the following Sunday. He said, Church, before I preach today, I want to tender my apology. For the things I said last Sunday. I saw that that turned some people off. Please, I bend and my heart is on bended knees. I'm sorry I spoke like that last week. Now, whatever the committee of deacons want that will not rock the boat, I'm your preacher. I'm here by your appointment. I will do whatever you want. The man did not have the name of Jesus. Only the people that have the silver and the gold and the power and the authority, they were the people on whom he depended. We're here for this minister's conference so that if that backbone, like jellyfish, had been at your back, and you could not stand and you are like a puppet for the rich people in the land to control your calling and your ministry today you come out of that in jesus name now it's not another fisherman that will give you fish in that river children have you any meat there? No, Lord. Throw your net there. We've toiled all the night. 
and we caught nothing. But at your word, we'll do, we'll do it. And they throw their nets there. That name is powerful. Yeah. And they caught, and they began to count. What a great catch they had. If you can bring your mind and your heart and your life and your ministry under the authority of the name of Jesus, all the needs of your life will be supplied in Jesus' name. Many years ago, in uh, our ministry, Deep Alive, there was somebody that had money. Of all the people I'd seen in my short life at that time, he was the richest I'd ever come in contact with. I didn't say the richest in the country, the richest I have come in contact with. And he came to our office and he saw the secretary using the manual typewriter. And then on his own, he went and he bought IBM machine. And that thing at that time, splendid. I'd not seen that before at that time. But you know, now things have changed. We have the computer, wherever it is before the computer uh, became so popular. And uh, so we started using his IBM typewriter. And it brought out our outlines and everything we did very well. Then I heard that he left his wife and got another. And I looked at the IBM machine. I said, now, stand straight. You're preaching this. And the man said, it doesn't go by preaching of the Bible. It goes by money. So I said, it should pack the IBM machine. And the container was still there. And all the accessories were there. Put everything inside and go carry and give to that man. And I said, tell him, if you don't accept the word, I don't accept your riches. And he came, and he was, uh, he was pleading, and he said, I got that thing for you before I kicked away my wife. And so I was still all right when I bought that thing for you. I said, thank you, sir. I don't interpret the word of God like that. He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. And I said, carry your thing away. And you know, after that time, I don't know how it happened. IBM machines just came and we had one there, had one in Lagos, had one in the state, had one at everywhere. And then social media came, we had computer, we had, we had now more than one IBM machine. If you keep that one on the basis of compromise, you will not have others following. But if you have the name of Jesus, I have the name of Jesus. Somebody there today, I have the name of Jesus. That name will carry you through. That name will do everything there is to be done in your life, in your family, in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Look at verse 7. And they were told in verse 7. And he took him by the right hand. And he lifted him up. And immediately, somebody help me shout immediately. And immediately, his feet and ankle bones received strength. Look at verse 16 there. Verse 16 tells us, and his name. That's the authority of the New Testament of the Acts of the Apostles. That's the power. That's the miracle worker. In the Acts of the Apostles, it's the name, and his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom ye see and know, yea, the faith 
which is by him a given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all that name will work in your ministry mark chapter 16 reading from verse 17 mark 16 reading from verse 17 the signs shall follow them that believe any believer there you believe for salvation any believer there you believe for sanctification any believer still there you believe in the supernatural any believer still there you believe in the supply that comes from the hand of god and from heaven any believer still there you believe in the supernatural support that the lord will give you you know somebody might walk away on you and say you have become too serious since you went for that conference and now you are a man of the world a woman on the world and in your ministry he wants to walk out on you you know sometimes we have deep feelings because of the intimacy we have the interaction we have with somebody and when somebody walks out on you like that in the church you feel there's a great loss but if you if they want to go let them go and you stick to the word of god and then you say i'm a believer in supernatural supply these signs shall follow them that believe in my name are you there you'll begin to do it in my name they'll cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues verse 18 it says in verse 18 and they shall take up serpents they'll throw them away and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them and they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover now you need to understand the ministry of healing they shall lay their hands on the sick one way in james chapter 5 if any sick among you let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the lord the anointing with oil will not do anything but the name anointing with oil in the name of the lord and the lord shall save the seed and if he has committed sins they shall be forgiven him confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that she may be healed the effectual prayer of a father of a righteous man availeth more that's another method speak the word only and my servant shall be healed that's another method. He sent the word and healed them and delivered them from all their afflictions. That's another method. If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be healed. And he came, she came and touched his garment. That's another method. And God worked special miracles by Paul the Apostle. And handkerchiefs and aprons were taken out of his body. And it was taken far away to the people that were demon possessed. And as the handkerchiefs and the aprons touched them, they were healed and delivered. That's another method. You know, you have to understand that there's this method, there's this method. But the bottom line is... You believe in the name of Jesus. Wonderful things will happen through you in Jesus. And I'm coming to number three now. Number three is deliverance from evil spirit. Deliverance from evil spirit. Now, we need to understand deliverance. Some people have made a major, major thing out of a minor thing. 
And you say, this is my ministry. The ministry of deliverance. And they go about looking for people who are possessed or whatever. And you see a preacher and uh, they say, I see a demon there. And there you accept it. You have demon. Talk now. And they come, maybe you, it's a prayer partner. And then you're experiencing uh, some issues in your family. And it's just lack of good communication between the husband and the wife. He talks and she talks. And she tells the children, go this way. And the husband said, children, come back. Don't listen uh, to her. And that brings problem in the family. It's just an issue of spending money. That the man got all the salary and is taking care of my uh, mother, grandma, grandpa, all the relatives, everybody. When he comes back home, salary does not remain. And the wife needs money for essential things. All the money is gone. That's what is causing the problem in that family. And sometimes it is, uh, you know, just misunderstanding each other on minor, non-essential things that every, anybody could have overlooked. And they make a great point, a mountain out of a molehill. That's why they're having a problem. But somebody comes to them and he says, yes, yes, yes. That problem in your family. Can I tell you, will you accept your wife is possessed? She needs deliverance. But my wife is born again. Doesn't matter. Your wife needs deliverance. And then she carries the wife. Number one, you couldn't deliver your wife yourself. You're sleeping together on the same bed and your body touching her body could not drive uh, that evil spirit away there's something wrong with you there <laughs> look at dagon look at dagon dagon was there and then they brought the ark of the lord no priest no israelite just that ark of the lord the following morning when those people when they woke up that Dagon was falling to the ground. That's power. From that ark. And then they set up that Dagon again. And the following morning, no priest, no deliverance prayer, nothing but the presence of the ark there. The head of Dagon was cut off. The head of that demon must go off. The brain of that demon must be blown off. Yeah. And then they abandoned their day gone. Now, if you have Christ, if you have the Holy Spirit, if you have the word of God abiding in you, I thought you cast out devils outside in the, you know, when you go for all these meetings, as you come back home, why is the power dormant at home? The power will rise up like a giant in your family. Yeah. And you don't have to carry your wife to a deliverance minister. Cast out devils for me. Cast out devils for me. And then uh, sometimes it's the wife that goes to maybe a uh, night vigil somewhere. And everybody is lining up. And the minister there is anointing them with oil, laying hands on them, and they are falling to the ground. And uh, so the wife of a beloved pastor, he comes now to on the line. And before they anoint her with oil, uh, they say, oh, what's, what's your problem? Well, I'm a wife of a minister, but my husband is demon-possessed. Ah. You go to confess that kind of confession outside in a night vigil. And then you say, okay, what do you want? I want, uh, you know, the devil to go out of my husband. They say, okay, they'll do deliverance for him by proxy. 
they'll do the deliverance there now then it will affect him at home and you're so happy and excited and then you shake shake and shake and as you see other people falling down you fall down why for pastor and then after that you go back home and your husband said where have you been where did you send me don't have liberty to go anywhere argument starts again what you thought was demon is disagreement come together answer the question where have you been I went to such and such a place. What happened there? I regret it now. Confess and say, I'm sorry. That humility, that confession, that yieldedness will solve the problem in the family. As you are here today, and the name of Jesus will be effective in your life, no demon will be active in your life anymore in Jesus' name. Amen. Because it says in Mark chapter 16 verse 18, they laid their hands on the seed and they recovered. Look at verse 20. In verse 20 it says, and they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them confirming the word or signs following there will be confirmation in your ministry from now on in jesus name Amen. look at philippians chapter 2 reading from verse 9 philippians chapter 2 verse 9 wherefore god also has highly exalted him and giving him a name which is above every name the name of jesus is above every name of any man every name of every sickness every name of any spirit god has given him a name which is above every name but stand it says in verse 10 that at the name of Jesus, what will happen? Every knee shall bow. Of things in heaven and things on the earth and things under the earth. Then in verse 11, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So the glory of God the Father. Let's come to point number two now. Point number two. Triumph for the name of Jesus while ministering. Look at Acts chapter 4, reading from verse 12. Triumph. You'll be triumphant. Amen is too low. Yeah. As you minister, while ministering, you're ministering the word in the power of the Spirit by the name of Jesus. And it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, neither is there deliverance in any other. Neither is there redemption in any other. Neither is there eternal life in any other. Neither is there, is there conversion and transformation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Three things. Number one steadfastness or steadfast commitment to the name of Jesus. Number two, sustained courage for the name of Jesus. And number three, serene, peaceful 
Conscience nurtured by Jesus. Number one. Steadfast commitment to the name of Jesus. Acts chapter 4. We're reading from verse 17. Acts chapter 4. Reading from verse 17. But that is spread no further among the people. Let us strictly threaten them, charge them, command them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. Even though his name is new. That the sin behind their success, the spread of the gospel, the manifestation of power, they knew it was the name of Jesus. Let's threaten them, challenge them, command them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. Verse 18. And he called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. The name. That's the important thing. Whatever you have, you must have that name. Whatever you don't have, you must have that name. Then in verse 19, but Peter and John and such and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. Then in verse 20, they said, But for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. That commitment to the name of Jesus in the way you live, in the things you do, in the life, the conduct, in the character, you manifest, in the thought you have, in the project program you have, in the path that you follow. Everything from prayer to preaching to the practical area of your life must be based on the name of Jesus. And it must be what glorifies the name of the Lord. And you have that steadfast commitment to the name of Jesus. Look at number two there. Number two there, sustained courage for the name of Jesus. Sustained courage. You know, and sometimes you can have courage for a moment, a fleeting minute. You have courage, and then after that minute, everything goes down like bushfire. That you don't have the courage anymore. But you know, the courage of yesterday will not suffice for today. The courage of last month will not suffice today. And the courage of your early years of the Christian faith will not suffice for today. What if I told you that in my earlier years of conversion, I was converted in the school of an atheist. Everybody knows the story. And I took my stand for the name of the Lord. Now, those years, 1964, 65, up to 72, when I now taught in that school, the courage of that time to carry on my conviction at that time. What if that's all the courage I have? And now I'm a pastor, I'm a preacher, I'm a superintendent, and now no courage anymore. The little, little rats can threaten me. And the little puny people that have no power, they can't stop my mouth, muscle my mouth. And the people I don't even know, unnamed people, 
I don't see their face, but they can't threaten me. And I cannot be afraid of people I don't even know, I don't even see. And people that are not as equipped as I am. And then I've lost the courage now. My hands hang down. My shoulders are down. And then I have what they call depression. A little thing. Why are you doing that? How can that happen? Allow me. Nobody will allow you. But the name of Jesus will allow you. Yeah. It's the name. It's the name. It's the power in the name. And then uh, your courage in the Lord. Your courage for the name of Christ is sustained. I pray every day. Every week. Every month. All through your life, your courage will continue. Yeah. They say in the world, the higher you go, the cooler you become. The, but we say in the scriptures, as your days are, so shall your strength be. Yeah. You go from strength to strength. Yeah. You go from power to power. Yeah. You go from conviction to conviction. Because you have sustained courage for the name of the Lord. Look at Acts. We're looking at chapter 4, verse 31. Acts chapter 4, verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaking where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and speak the word of God with boldness. Their courage continued. Your courage will continue. Your boldness will continue. Your power will continue. Why are we talking about Moses all the time? And we say Moses until the age of 120, until the last day of his earthly life, that his power, his strength, even his eyesight, that anything does not abate. But he says we're now in the new covenant and we have greater strength and greater provision and greater power than those in the old covenant. Your power will not fail you when you need it. Your strength will not need, leave you when you need it. And your courage, your boldness, your conviction will be sustained in Jesus' name. Look at verse 33 there. In verse 33, and with great power gave the apostles, not only Peter, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. Give a good amen to the Lord. Amen. Number three there. Number three, serene conscience. Not church by Jesus. Brothers and sisters, fellow ministers, the conscience is very important. But sometimes the conscience becomes clouded. The conscience becomes ignorant. The conscience becomes weak. The conscience becomes darkened. Now the conscience is the let me use this language, the policeman on the inside, the policewoman on the inside, that will say, you took a wrong step there. You spoke a wrong word there. You acted mistaken over there. And the people, they'll show you by the way they look at you. And so, the conscience gets used to the frowns of people. The conscience gets used to the contradictions of people. And when you do something, you don't go back to the world and check up. Did I say it right? Did I mean it well? 
Did I follow the truth? You don't do that anymore. Well, after you have preached, after you have counseled, after you have said anything, done anything, then you come out, you're looking at the faces of the people. And if you don't say, good afternoon, like you used to say, ah, I said something wrong. Something is wrong with me. And if they don't smile at you, and they just pass along, and they're brazen, they have their goal, they want to show you that you don't depend on Bible alone, you don't depend on the name of Jesus alone, you don't depend upon the conscience nurtured by the truth alone. You must depend upon them and then when you see that this one is frowning this one is contradicting this one is saying a negative word and all that your ignorant conscience will feel guilty and there's no peace anymore and then if you're praying you're saying god what have i done wrong go back to the scriptures and if you have said if you have done what is right according to the scriptures let the frowning Frowning people will never cease from the earth. They'll always be there. Contradicting people will never cease from the earth. They'll all be there. Opposers will never stop on the earth. They will all be there. That's not why every that's why everybody will not go in the rapture. They will all be there. But if you have ministered, if you have spoken, if you have taught according to the word, you will have a clean conscience, serene peaceful, not being jolted by the frowns of anyone. You will stand. Amen. I said you will stand. Amen. You know, I've been a teacher all my life. When I was in secondary school, I was teaching. There are some of those students in my class, they just didn't have the stomach for mathematics. And she you know, all that I did and all that, and I tried to teach the best I could. They will, you know, some of them will be making a noise, some of them will be reacting like this, reacting like that. And when I come back to the class, the following, um, you know, lesson, uh, some of them were ready, they're ready for me. And they're ready to disturb those who want to hear the uh, teaching of that mathematics. I didn't change the curriculum because of that. I didn't change the syllabus because of that. And I didn't feature it before them. I still taught them what I needed to teach them. The same thing now, I teach the world. And the same courage, and the same conscience, and the same stability that I had at that time, teaching only an earthly subject, I now come to teach heavenly subject, and I still stand on the word. You will stand. I said you will stand. So that your conscience is peaceful. Is serene. After you have done the will of God. You don't ever go to God and be asking. Lord did I do anything wrong? Did I do anything? You will know if you have done something wrong. Go back to the word. Everything you do. Everything you say. However you minister. Go back to the word. And once you've said what the word has said, you've taught what the word has revealed, there's no bad conscience or there's no guilty conscience. Look at Acts chapter 24. And I'm reading from verse 16. Acts chapter 24 verse 16. It says, and herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of, of offense toward God first. Void of offense toward God. Now, those who are not in agreement with God, they are going to be offensive to them. And those who are not submissive to the total revelation of the word is going to offend them. And Paul the apostle that said this, the Pharisees were offended. And the Sadducees were offended. And the Gentiles were offended. That's why they imprisoned him. All those who were not in agreement with God, they were offended. But the people that are in agreement with God, men that will say, that's the word, carry on. 
He didn't have any conscience that is filled with offense toward them. Now, to have a conscience void of offense toward God and man, you must still put God first. You must not be bending and yielding and submitting and cringing and fidgeting under any man. And the Lord give you understanding and make you to stand firm and stand straight all your life in Jesus' name. Give me a good by Elsa Minister saying, I come to point number three now. Point number three, transformation through the name of Jesus by ministers. Acts chapter 3 verse 16. Acts chapter 3 verse 16. And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong. Hold on. That's Peter talking there. And he was talking about the man who had been paralyzed from birth 40 years. And he says the name through faith in the name of Jesus has made this man strong. Now, Peter himself that ministered the name of Jesus to that man. And that man became strong. Peter, are you taking the same pill you are giving to other people, making them strong? Are you taking that? Yes, I take that. And that's why everywhere he went, that's why he remained healthy, he remained strong, he remained perfect in sound, in a sound, perfectly sound in itself. And there are some of us, what we give to other people, we don't eat thereof. What we minister to other people, we don't take thereof. We are in the ministry of healing the sick, but to ourselves, we're sick. We're ministering to the people that have this challenge and that challenge. And they are coming to perfect soundness. And we ourselves, we're managing life. We're just managing our body. If we walk a little, we're tired, we're worn out, discrepant. And it's like our whole system is about packing up the same soundness. We minister to other people. Which you will have. I will have. I said I will have. Every sickness God has used you. To take away from other people. All those sicknesses will be taken away from your life. Did you hear this scripture before? So. And then you will reap. Have you heard that before? Now, when you sow rice, you reap rice. When you sow corn, you reap, tell me. When you sow potato, tell me. Now, when you, when you sow money, you know somebody says, Pastor, Minister, I want to sow into your ministry. And they bring out an envelope and there's money inside. I will say, God bless you. What they sow, money, that's what they worry. But now, I go about, you go about, and we go about, we're sowing healing. I didn't hear you. Yeah. We're sowing deliverance. Yeah. We're sowing freedom. Yeah. We're sowing victory. Yeah. What we sow is what we reap. And so, if you're going about sowing healing, sowing healing, sowing healing into the lives of other people, guess what you reap? You reap healing. And Peter sowed healing into the life of that man. What did he reap? Healing, health, strength, 
power, agility, ability. Be it so in your life, in Jesus' name. Amen. Three things we're looking at. Number one, preaching for transformation in the name of Jesus. Number two, praying without transgression in the name of Jesus. Number three, possibilities of transcending. To transcend means you go beyond the level you have ever known. Higher. Amen. Greater. Amen. Greater height in Jesus' name. Amen. Possibilities transcending through the name of Jesus. Let's look at number one. Number one is preaching for transformation. Preaching for transformation. Anytime you preach, don't just preach. Preach for transformation. Anytime you minister, don't just minister and forget yourself and just say this and say this. Minister for transformation. Anytime you do anything in the house of the Lord, do it that there will be transformation in somebody's life. A change. Let's look at chapter 3 of Acts, verse 19. Acts, chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore. That's what he said in chapter 2, verse 38. Repent. That's what he said in Acts chapter 20, verse 20 and 21. Repent. That's the same word in Acts 17, 30. Repent. The reason we minister is that the people who are in sin will come out of sin and come to salvation, transformation. Those who are sick will come to healing, transformation. Those who are demonized will come to deliverance, transformation. Those who are dominated will come to dominion, transformation. That's the reason for declaring the word. Repent, repent ye therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Look at verse 26. Unto you first, God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you, transformation, turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Let's come to number two here. Number two, praying without transgression in the name of Jesus. Praying without any secret sin. There was one of my fellow ministers, but not in deeper life. He had his own ministry and was sharing this with me. He was invited to an hospital to pray for a dear, dearly beloved person. And that fellow was on the bed, like, could not do anything. And he called this brother minister to come and pray. He felt in his heart that something had gone wrong somehow, somewhere. He couldn't tell them, I'm not ready to pray now. I need to settle something. So he went to them, and he was there by the hospital bed. And as the person was lying down on the bed, helpless, 
sick, almost I gave it up. My brother, minister, knelt by the feet and he was praying, but praying to God about himself. Lord, I'm sorry for that foolish step, that foolish act, that thing I did. And I don't feel confident to pray for this person now. Oh Lord, I'm sorry. Have mercy on me. Forgive me. And he was forgiven. He had peace. He had joy. Then he rose up to pray for the person on the bed. As he rose up, the fellow rose up too. Healed. Healed. He had not even prayed for the healing. He was thinking, I'll do this first and settle my life as he settled his life, his ministry was settled. As you settle your life, if you want to see power, if you want to see demonstration, if you want to see confirmation of the power of God through your ministry, settle that life. Your ministry was settled. Your finance was settled. And power will settle in your life in Jesus' name. Now, if you gamble with ministry, you put your foot, their foot there, you go here, you go there, you step on that, you step on that, you drink that, you smoke that, and you try to give excuse, and then people have problems. Now you want to pray for them. And it's transgression in your heart. Transgression in your mind. Transgression in your hand. Your hands are defiled with other, other men's wives. And now pray, pray, pray. Fast, fast, fast. And then you want to tell God, do this. And God said, young man, who do you think you are? I told you do this, you didn't. Or I told you not to go, that's where you always go. What to do, what not to do, that's what you always do. And you now have the uh, gumption, the authority, the audacity to tell me the Almighty do this. I'm not going to be your errand boy. He doesn't answer prayer when transgressions are like that. Sometime you go. A particular minister that knew that by the grace of God, God uses me to pray for the sick and to do this and to do that. He came for prayer. He had fasted for 40 days. After fasting for 40 days, he lost all his strength. He was sick. He was almost collapsing. And he came with his wife. His wife actually brought him because they had to lead him now by the hand. And he sat down gently before me. And he said, Pastor, I need prayer. I'm dying. I'm going. I need prayer now. Pray for me. Then he bowed his head and closed his eyes. I said, lift up your eyes. We're not praying yet. Tell me. Before the 40 days fasting, you know, what was your life like between you and your wife here? Oh, and he said, everything was all right. And the wife saw it on my face that everything was all right. Do I believe that? And so the wife said, Pastor, can I talk? I said, please go ahead. Before my husband went for the 40 day fasting, oh, a terrible, terrible disagreement. And I told him, I said, My dear, don't do this fasting yet. My heart is not right with you. Your heart is not right with me. We're not living right in this house. The members of the church should not know. What goes on between you and I? It's like, shut up. You're a weaker vessel. You don't understand. I'm the preacher. I'm the pastor. And then he went on the fasting. 40 days. 
And then, instead of going up, he came down. I looked at him, I said, Pastor so-and-so, hear your wife. And he said, Pastor, I'm sorry, that is true. That's what happened. That's why I'm in this condition now. And I made them to reconcile between each other and to settle what they ought to settle. And then we pray. And power came from heaven, raised that man up, and the man came into perfect health. If you're going to clap, clap. We must not allow transgression to remain. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. I come to number three here. Number three, the possibilities transcending through the name of Jesus. From today, as you obey the Lord, as you do what the Lord is challenging us to do, great, great possibilities in your life in Jesus' name. Now, have you noticed in the Acts of the Apostles that great, great possibilities beyond and above the Old Testament? In the Old Testament, they put Jeremiah in jail in the prison and somebody had to plead or the king, don't allow Jeremiah to die in that pit, bring him out. In the New Testament, they put Peter and John in the prison. Nobody went to any king to plead on their behalf. An angel came from heaven, opened the door and said, go out, continue your ministry. That's higher than the Old Testament. In chapter 12, the possibilities in the New Testament, Peter was put in a prison by Herod. And the whole church in verse 5 prayed. And Peter, knowing that the following day, Herod was to take him and behead him. Now, if you are waiting for execution, the following day, Will you sleep that night? Probably not. But Peter slept. He slept so much, deep sleeping. An angel came from heaven and slapped him and tapped him, get up. And you understand, all the soldiers that are tied with him, did you see the light in the prison? Did you hear the voice of the angel? that said, get up. They didn't hear the sound of the chains that fell on a concrete ground. And then uh, they said, follow me. Put on your sandals and follow me. And they went through the first gate and came to the second gate and the gates opened by themselves. Your time has come. Yeah. Those gates will open by themselves. I can just see you now getting up and then uh, you're approaching that iron door and they said in that village, in that place, that no open door had ever presented itself before anybody. And as you are going on, Jesus said, ask, Seek, tell me the next word, knock. We'll come to the Acts of the Apostles, and the Acts of the Apostles transcend even the Gospels. He didn't ask, he didn't seek, he was sleeping, and he didn't knock. And just as he got to that door, that iron door opened. Your iron door will open. Open into power. Open into prosperity. Yeah. Open into progress. Yeah. And then if there's another door, a second door, you don't have to cry. You don't have to roll on the ground. You don't have to fast. Seven days, 40 days, Calvary has done it all. That second iron door will open for you. Yeah. The possibilities 
in the new covenant. Stephen had gone to glory. Philip, the next of the deacons, had gone to Samaria. And as he went to Samaria, the spirit, uh, the angel said, go to Gaza, the desert. He went there. And the spirit said, join yourself to this chariot now. When he came from Samaria and came to that desert in Gaza, there was no chariot, there was no transportation. He walked. And then the fellow was he saved and baptized and in joy he went in his own chariot. And the man did not think, my preacher Philip, he doesn't have a chariot. How will he get back to where he's going? And the Spirit of God took him and transported him and was found in Azotus. That's a ministry transcending. It went beyond what everybody had experienced before. I said that to say this, that from today, from this hour, transcending possibilities. Yeah. Where you never thought you will reach, you will reach there. Yeah. Where you never thought you'll get to, you will get there. Yeah. The miracles that you never thought will happen, those miracles will happen. Yeah. Now it's your time to accept everything you have heard today, to believe everything you have heard today, and to expect, waiting, that that thing will happen. Amen. More. Amen. More. Amen. More Amen. will happen in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you believe? Amen. Do you accept? Amen. What are you? Stand up. Forget the past. Forget the failures of the past. Forget the mediocre ministry of the past. And say, Lord, here am I. I am ready now. Talk to the Lord in prayer. Talk to the Lord in prayer. Let the supernatural begin. Let mighty strength take hold of you. Let the old failure be totally forgotten. Accept the word. Believe the word. Confess the word. Settle at home. Live a consistent, righteous life. A child of the king. A son of the king. A daughter of the king. Every moment, every time. Don't give chance to Satan to sin to any evil spirit. Don't give chance to your old self. Believe 
the new covenant is higher, greater than the old covenant. Triumph. So the name of the Lord Jesus steadfastly committed sustainably courageous not cringy under any threat serene peaceful conscience don't throw away your conscience to the hand of any usurper don't throw away your conscience to the one that wants to take that flower and ruffle and destroy that power, that flower. Don't throw your life into the hands of the people that take joy in diminishing you, putting you down, terrorizing you, uplifting you with their look, with their words, with their action, with their body language. Preach for transformation. Pray without transgression. Hold on to the possibilities that transcend. Be a man of God. Every moment, know who you are. Be a man of God on the sea, on land, in the air. When you are alone, when you are with other people, a man of God, righteous, holy, sanctified, submissive unto God living by the word of the Lord alone, the woman of God. Every moment, every minute, don't let your temper run away from you. Don't let temptation drag your feet. It will defeat. Don't allow the old life to come back and chain you. Let the name of Jesus be mighty from your heart, from your mind. From your consciousness, from the inner man, and take the name of Jesus with you everywhere you go. And whatever you need. Salvation, sanctification, supernatural strength, supply, provision, purity, power, progress, whatever you need, it's all in the name of Jesus. Receive. And it will be yours.
In Jesus' name we pray. Say amen for yourself. Amen for the new strength. Amen for the new power. Amen for rising up and doing everything the Lord has ordained for you to do. This work of God will prosper in your hand. God will anoint that hand. Where is the anointed hand there? And then the name of Jesus will become mighty, mighty, mightier from today in your mouth in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, Almighty God, the great God of heaven, the creator of the heavens and the earth, we thank you, Lord, you have lifted us up by your word. And we pray we'll not go back into that valley of despondency anymore in Jesus' name. We pray all the dirty water, all the defilement, all the deficiency, and all the deception, self-deception that have been revealed and confessed and forgiven. They will never come back again in Jesus' name. Amen. Depression will never come back again. Defeat will never come back again. Disease will never come back again. The debt, your debt, will all be paid in Jesus' name. Demonization will never come back again in Jesus' name. As you send us forth to bring perfect soundness to other people, that same perfect soundness will come to every one of us in Jesus' name. In your name we go. In your name we go forth. In your name we deliver the oppressed. In your name we heal the sick. In your name we bring people out of their dungeon and bring them to the peak of the mountain top in Jesus' name. Lord, turn us around. Transform us. The things that choose to put a mouth to the mud, to the ground, no more. Yeah. The thing that should to drive us angry, crazy, mad, will not drive us anymore in Jesus' name. Yeah. Peace in your life. Yeah. Purity in your heart. Yeah. Power in your ministry. Yeah. Stories of success. Stories of power. Amen. Stories of progress. Amen. The Lord confirm in every life. Amen. Brother, you are no more the same. Amen. Sister minister, you are no more the same. Amen. The strength of the Lord go with you. Amen. The power of the Almighty go with you. Amen. No more crying. Amen. Joy happiness, Amen. gladness, Amen. laughter, Amen. success all the way through. Amen. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.